Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be looking at one of the most neglected classes in all of Godot, and that is the expression class. By the end of this video you'll have a system where you can attach a property to any node or resource, and it will allow you to input an expression like what I'll do here. So I could say something like print 10 plus 2, and this property will essentially hold GDScript. So when we run the project and it compiles the expression, we get an output. So you can see we got 12. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into how you would actually code this. All right, so looking in the code of my expression executor node, which is literally just a node with a script attached, you can see that I have an export custom property, and this is going to hint that we want an expression to be formatted in the inspector, which is what you're seeing right here. I'm gonna reset this though. And then we're not giving it any hints, but we're just saying it's going to be my expression, that's the variable, and it's gonna be formatted as a string. So I'll be using this exported expression property just to make things a bit easier to understand, but an expression is basically just a string. So whether you have like a line edit or some data you wanna import from a JSON file, anything will work as an expression as long as it can actually be parsed correctly. All right, so the first thing we want to do is define a new expression variable. I'm going to set this to the class expression, and we're going to just set it equal to expression.new. So once we've created the expression object, we can actually execute the code on that. I'm going to do it in the ready function just for this example because it's easy. And we first want to call the parse method on our input expression. So we're going to say var and this will be called error, and we're gonna set it equal to expression.parse, and the input is just going to be the my expression variable, which again is literally just a string that we're defining right here. Now, once we've called the parse function on the expression, we're gonna get a result. So we can check the result with if error is not equal to okay, then we want to print what error we got. So I'm just gonna do print expression parse error and then we're going to put in the expression dot get error text and that's going to return the text of the error that we ran into we also want to remember to return if this is the case so that we stop all processing and then after this line we know that the parse was successful so we can define a new variable called result and set it equal to expression dot execute and you can put in some optional parameters that we're going to go over in a second, but for now, let's just get our basic expressions working. So after we execute, we can optionally get the result as text. Now, if you're just executing some specific code, you don't exactly need the result, but sometimes it's nice to have. So the way we do that is if expression dot has execute failed. If that's the case, we're going to print expression failed and get the error text. And then we'll just say else which means that our expression has completed and we're just gonna print expression result. So with this code, we have very basic expression functionality and I'm gonna go over inputting different values for properties and also calling methods on either this script or other scripts in a second. So let's just input a very basic expression. I'm gonna go to my property and we're gonna say 100 divided by two. And now when we run the game, we should get 50 in the output and you can see expression result is 50. Now, if you've read up on the documentation, you'll notice that the parse and execute function allow for you to put in additional inputs. What this will allow us to do is define properties inside of the expression. So maybe something like my underscore bool and this will basically reference one of our inputs that has a value assigned to it and use that as a property for our expression. So the way we can pass in inputs is first by defining them. And we basically wanna define a new inputs dictionary. So we're gonna set the type equal to a dictionary and then we're gonna set it equal to and I'm just gonna open up some curly brackets and manually define all of my properties and their values. So the property again should match the one I made in the expression, which is gonna be my bool. So I'm gonna copy this, make it a property in my inputs, and then just set the value of it to true. And then inside of my parse function, I'm able to add another argument and we're gonna make it inputs.keys and this will get the names of all of our properties so that it can use them in the expression. And then when we actually execute the expression, we want to pass in our inputs and then the base object that we are executing the expression on. So for my inputs, I can pass in inputs.values, and that will get the values of all of the keys I parsed it with. And then for the second argument is the base instance or the object we are executing the expression on. So for this, I'm just gonna pass in self and this way we're able to call methods on this script later on. 
So now inside of my expression, I'm able to use the my bool keyword, which is gonna reference this property and basically give us true. So I could do something like cast the bool as an int. So my bool, and then when I execute this expression, it's gonna give me one if the bool is true. And if I switch this to false, it should give me zero right here. Now, like I said before, since we're passing in self in the execute function, that allows us to call functions or methods on the reference that we're passing in through the expression. So if I was to define a new function at the bottom of my script down here, I could call it test function. I could have it return an integer, and then we could just say return 10. I'm able to now use this in the expression. So I could say something like test function, which we know is gonna return 10, and then do the divided by two again. And this is gonna work because self is being passed into the execute method. And then the last example I wanted to cover was using singletons. Now you might expect if I have a global auto load set up in my project settings, it is a global script, which means I can reference it normally with the global keyword. So I know that I have my global function as a function inside of the global script. And if I just called this in my expression, you might expect this to work, but for some reason Godot doesn't allow us to directly reference singletons yet. So instead we have to pass the reference to the autoload as one of our inputs. The easiest way to go about this is inside of the expression, we just wanna make another input and we can call it global to match the name of our singleton. And then we just set the value of it to the global singleton. And now anytime we reference global, it's gonna return that global singleton, meaning that we can say global.myglobal function and the expression is going to compile correctly and be executed so that we get to that global script calls print message. Now it is important to note that this will support a lot of functionality, but you cannot just script any property. So something you cannot do is define new variables inside of here. So like for this line, I wouldn't be able to create a new variable like my var and set it equal to the global function because this would just not work. You cannot construct variables. And then you're also not able to use the if, else, is, as, or modulo function as it will basically just not be able to parse the expression. And then apart from the entries that I've defined here, it's pretty easy to tell if you can't use a specific method or expression because Godot will just not allow you to parse it or it'll throw an error. So it's pretty easy to find whether or not you can use specific expressions. So just be wary of that. But anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. So I just thought I'd share this really cool class I found because not a lot of people know about this and it's extremely powerful, especially when making like console tools for your application. This can be a game changer. If you did end up liking the video or you learned something new, be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing as it is one of the best ways to help support the channel and it's also free. So why not do it? And then I did try to cover as much as possible in this video to get you guys started with expressions, but if you do think that there's something I missed or you'd like to share your own thoughts, be sure to drop a comment so that I can read through those and share with the community. Anyways though, thank you for watching, and if you want to check out any more of my Godot tutorials, be sure to watch one of these videos or check out the channel, and I will see you in the next one.